ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ಥಾಪಕತ್ವ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಾಣ ಮಹಾಚಾರ್ಯೋ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಫೇ ನಮಃ ಓ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಫೇತ್ಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೈ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಅಸ್ ವಿತ್ ತ್ರೀ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಲಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸಾಲಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ Sri Ramakrishna says it is extremely necessary for the spiritual aspirants to get into solitude once in a while. And Sri Ramakrishna is not rigid that you get into solitude for long durations. He is not rigid that you get into solitude right now. Sri Ramakrishna first said you, one should get into solitude for three days. Then he realized three days also is a tough thing for the people. Householders, they have got their jobs, they have got their family affairs, they have got uh, their, their household affairs to be taken care of. Three days, how these poor people can take out. So, he became so lenient. He told them, go for one day. One day in solitude. And that also not immediately, not right now you go. At your leisure. How considerate Sri Ramakrishna is. At your leisure. Whenever you find leisure time, take one day out of your busy schedules go into solitude and meditate upon god contemplate upon god cry to god to give you that devotion for the lotus feet so that you keep on remembering the lotus feet of the lord you keep on remembering the lotus feet of the mother constantly even while you are engaged in your worldly activities then shri ram krishna says that with one hand hold on to god with other hand keep on doing your worldly duties it is not i he is not telling you give away all the duties renounce everything uh, and uh, go to the uh, mountains and caves and start uh, practicing your spiritual practices no do your duty with one hand with other hand hold on fast to the god and then shri ram krishna says god will lessen your duties and when the time comes that you have no duties to perform when your second hand is also free from doing duties then grab hold of the god then catch hold of the lord's feet with both the hands that is the only thing then one has to do but till such time till such time we are privileged to lessen our duties we have that privilege of lessening our duties till such time do your duties but once in a while get into solitude and for that getting into solitude shri ramakrishna explained the necessity of getting into solitude with those three examples the examples of fencing around a young plant shri ramakrishna says when roadside plants uh, are planted the young plants they need some protection they need kind of a fencing so that cattle and other animals they don't come and damage them but once these plants are grown once the trunks become strong and sturdy then you can even tie an elephant to these trees once they have grown huge but till such time they are young we have to protect them so that is one example shri ramakrishna gave second example he gave was that of a typhoid patient he said disease of worldliness is like that of a fever of typhoid now typhoid patient if he is kept in the room where there are so many savouries and pickles and the delicacies which are stored the chuck full of water is there how can the patient recover then out of that fever for that he has to be taken he has to be shifted from that room so that all these temptations they don't allure him all these temptations they don't deteriorate his condition so he has to be taken away from the room get recovered and then he can go inside after recovering he can go inside and enjoy those delicacies nothing is going to harm him but till the time that typhoid organism is there in the body the typhoid fever is persisting there is no way for his recovery if he is in the vicinity of all those temptations and allurements then third example shri ramakrishna gave when you get back into the worldly duties 
apply the turmeric of dispassion and discrimination and jump into waters otherwise those six crocodiles are waiting to pounce upon you are waiting to catch hold of you six alligators six crocodiles lust greed and uh, jealousy envy hatred all these they are going to drown you they are going to chew you apart so apply the turmeric of uh, apply the turmeric of dispassion and discrimination develop the detachment and keep on thinking what is real what is unreal and then there shri ramakrishna had told only god is real and eternal rest all other things they are ephemeral they are temporary they are vanishing there is no truth in those things which are surrounding us they are mere temptations which are pulling us back from our spiritual goal so having told that uh, next shri ramakrishna with all these brahmo devotees is going to take up another very important topic of who can teach so shri ramakrishna can teach he is after all the acharya nam mahacharya he has the command from the god and other teachers shri ramakrishna says unless and until they also get a command from god like narada like adi shankara acharya their uh, the, the teaching of others are going to be futile and then incidentally on this particular day uh, uh, along with keshav chandra sen and brahmo devotees another uh, uh, disciple of shri ramakrishna vijay krishna goswami he is also there now very interesting uh, point vijay krishna goswami and keshav chandra sen both were together in the brahmo samaj at one point of time they were like brothers they were very close over some issues they parted ways vijay krishna goswami came away from keshav chandra sen's brahmo samaj and there was a difference of opinion they were not on talking terms and uh, the, on this particular day somehow before keshav chandra sen came there to take uh, shri ram krishna on the steamer and uh, uh, on the boat ride on the ganges vijay was already there sitting with shri ram krishna in his room so he also had to accompany shri ram krishna on to keshab's steamer now keshab and vijay face to face not on talking terms some kind of uneasiness clearly seen clearly perceived by everyone over there they are not talking and shri ram krishna noticed this through his very sharp eyes that once these two uh, disciples who were like brothers who are closest friends now they have parted ways they are not on talking terms they are very uncomfortable even looking at each other and shri ram shri ram krishna noticed that keshav was shrinking away from vijay and then he wanted to reconcile these two long lost brothers so shri ram krishna said that uh, you know keshav and uh, vijay your fight is like that of uh, uh, you know ram and shiva now shiva is rama's guru shiva worship worships rama rama worships shiva that is their relationship but <laughs> shri ram krishna says look at their followers the following of shiva the demons and the ghosts and uh, you know walkers and the followers of rama the monkeys the vanar sena they are always at fight they the shiva's followers rama there is no fight between rama and shiva and with this kind of a, a story shri ram krishna tries to bring keshab and vijay close uh, together again and then uh, he tells keshab look keshab the problem is you don't uh, study your disciples before uh, making them your uh, uh, disciples for teaching he says you should understand each person's potential you should understand each person's capabilities and that's what shri ram krishna was so sharp at understanding the people's nature and then giving them the teachings suiting to their temperament suiting to their uh, spiritual progress 
So Sri Ramakrishna now brings that point over here. All men look alike. Sri Ramakrishna is telling uh, Keshav. All men look alike, to be sure, but they have different natures. All men, women, they have the same features, you know, two eyes and nose, two ears, mouth, and you know, the physical body. Everyone has head, shoulders. So they look alike. They have the same features, but they have different natures. Some have excess of sattva in them. Some have excess of rajas in them. Some have excess of tamas with them. Now, while dealing with these people, you should deal with them relatively to what quality they possess, to what quality is predominant in them. Do they have sattva? Do they have rajas? Do, do they have tamas? Are they pure to the core? Are they activity oriented with the predominant rajas? Or are they lethargic and they need to be hammered again and again, again and again if they have tamas predominant? So, <coughs> some have excess of sattva, some have excess of rajas and still others are excess of tamas. And then Sri Ramakrishna gives another very delicious example. He says, you must have noticed that cakes known as puli, they all look alike. The cakes, uh, the, the sweet meats. When you look uh, at the sweet meats in a sweet meat shop, outwardly they all look, they all look alike. But Sri Ramakrishna says, some pulis, some cakes, they have condensed milk in it, the rich stuff. Some milk, they have coconut kernel in it, a milder version. And some cakes, he says, they are just the, uh, uh, the, the hard lentils, the hard kalai pulse. So like the cakes in the sweetmeat shop, each one is of a different ingredient. Treat everyone according to their inherent tendencies and then you will not go wrong. Understand the people. And then Sri Ramakrishna says, do you know my attitude? Now, Sri Ramakrishna is the Acharyana Mahacharya. But what is his attitude? He never gets into that attitude of I am teaching anybody. He just shares whatever he has learned from the Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna says, do you know my attitude? As for myself, I eat, drink and live happily. I don't think. I don't think. I don't, uh, I, 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 I don't uh, uh, kind of do any exercises, mental exercises. Hmm? I just eat, drink and live happily. The rest, the Divine Mother knows. She does everything for me. He says, I am not doing anything. That, indeed, three words, they prick me. Sri Ramakrishna says, Three peoples, uh, three three words, they make me really upset. Now, what are those three words, Sri, the, 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 the words that make Sri Ramakrishna upset? Sri Ramakrishna says, Guru, Master and Father. The teacher, the Master and the Father, these three words, they make Sri Ramakrishna very upset. If somebody calls him with those uh, adjectives, Guru is the ultimate teacher. All three epithets, they are, Sri, according to Sri Ramakrishna, only God is qualified to have all these three epithets. The Guru, the Master and the Father. Only God is these three. He says, no, I cannot accept. But Mathur Babu, uh, who was uh, the, the son-in-law of Rani Raspani, who had uh, built this uh, uh, Dakshineshwar Kali temple complex. Mathur Babu, he always addressed Sri Ramakrishna as father. Mm. That was one exception that uh, Sri Ramakrishna had to accept. He could. Mathur Baba was also equally, uh, you know, adamant. Such was his faith, such was his strong connection with Sri Ramakrishna. Total dedication to Sri Ramakrishna. So he always used to address Sri Ramakrishna as father. So anyway, things aside, uh, these three things Sri Ramakrishna says that they make him upset tremendously. Guru, Master and Father. These three only belong to the Lord. 
And then Sri Ramakrishna says, there is only one Guru, Satchidananda. He is the ultimate Guru. Rest all, they are his kind of extended arms. There is only Guru is Satchidananda. That fellow, whatever Satchidananda teaches, that is the ultimate. He alone is the teacher. And then Sri Ramakrishna says, My attitude towards God is that of a child towards its mother. One can get human gurus by millions. Sri Ramakrishna says, There is no dearth of gurus in this world. We are seeing around us, isn't it? There is no dearth of gurus. But Sri Ramakrishna says, All want to be teachers, but who can be a true disciple? Very important point that Sri Ramakrishna has brought out to the notice of Keshav Chandrasen that you will find gurus by millions. But who wants to be a true disciple? Only when one wants to be a true disciple, the God will give him the command to teach others. We all want to be teachers. We all want to earn name and fame. Who wants to be a true disciple? So that is Sri Ramakrishna's teaching to Sri Keshav. It is extremely difficult to teach others. A man can teach only if God reveals to him and gives the command. And then Sri Ramakrishna gives examples of these great teachers of the world. Shukadev, Narad, Shankaracharya. He said, they are the true gurus. They have got the command of God to teach others. And therefore, in spite of so many centuries after they have departed. Their teachings still flow. Their teachings still are so much accepted by the people. Shankara had it too. Unless you have a command from God, who will listen to your words? Nobody. People may listen, but they will forget the next moment. That doesn't happen with the teachings of Shankaracharya. Even today, after so many centuries uh, that, that he is not amongst us, we still adore his words, we still adore his teachings, we still recite the stotras written by him. And then Sri Ramakrishna says, and finally, whom you are teaching? He says you are teaching people of Calcutta. Hmm? And don't you know how easily people of Calcutta get excited? They jump from one topic to another without any thought whatsoever. Then he has given an example that he says, the milk in kettle puffs and boils as long as the fire burns uh, underneath. You, the moment you take out the fuel, that hissing and bubbling and all that so-called, uh, uh, you know, uh, charismatic activity of the milk, it just dies down. And Sri Ramakrishna says, this is what the condition of people of Calcutta. They will be boisterous at one moment. He says they will uh, start digging well at one place. The moment they find stone, they will stop digging there. Then they will look for another place. Then there they start digging. There they find sand. Oh, no water. They want water. But at first place, they found stone. They gave up. Second place, they found sand. They gave up. And then Sri Krishna says, no, they will go to the third place. There is no tenacity. There is no perseverance. And just hopping from one thing to another. These are the people whom you are teaching. What that teaching is going to be of any use, Sri Ramakrishna says. So first, select your disciples. Select your students. Know them. Know what is, what is the stuff inside. And know if there is sattva predominant, rajas predominant, tapas predominant. Get to know their tendencies. Get to know their attitudes. And then... Having got the command from God, then you start teaching them. God does reveal to man, he says. God does reveal himself to man and speak. God speaks. God tells. That is Sri Ramakrishna's personal experience. And Sri Ramakrishna says, only then one can receive his command when God has given him the authority. So that is Sri Ramakrishna very forcefully he has uh, told Keshav Chandra Sen to be selective, to analyze the uh, uh, people who are coming to you and then having got the command from the God, 
pray to god to give you command pray to god to give you that knowledge that you can teach others without god's command you cannot teach them sri ramakrishna says that is and for for that particular thing he has given a, another small story which is uh, although i mean we are extending on our time limit of uh, 15 to 16 minutes but uh, it is worth uh, uh, you know listening to that story which sri ramakrishna has told sri ramakrishna says in uh, kamar pukur there is a lake by haldar pukur hmm. uh, pond there is a pond known as haldar pukur which is very uh, bang opposite uh, sri ramakrishna's ancestral home and now the uh, ramakrishna mat so sri ramakrishna says people used to go and uh, uh, you know, make uh, uh, the, the, the bank of this uh, pond very dirty. Hmm? They, they used to, uh, people used to befoul the banks by, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing their uh, uh, calls of nature and that kind of thing. And every time there used to be a fight between people not doing this and people doing this. So people used to tell, what is this? Every time you are coming and doing the, making this place dirty, Nobody is controlling it. And there is to be this bickering all along. Then one day, people of Kamarpur, they went to the government authority and told them, look, we use this water for cleaning, we use this. And people are coming and making the bank so dirty, they are defouling it. Then uh, the, the, the government office, they sent uh, one pune. Hmm? They, they, they sent uh, one... Uh, uh, Constable, <laughs> they sent one constable uh, with the notice that the bank of the rivers should not be made dirty. They should be keep clean. But that kind of notification from the regulated order from the government office that uh, with that constable, that notice was put. And Sri Ramakrishna says, from the next day, the nuisance stopped. Unless and until you have that authority. Nobody will listen to you, Sri Ramakrishna says. First gain that authority. Come and post that notice that no befouling this particular lake, this particular pond, no dirtying the pond with your calls of nature. Get that authority later and then people will automatically obey the command. People will automatically read it, listen to it and implement it. So Sri Ramakrishna gave, uh, gave this example to Keshav Chandra Sen just to make sure that one should first get command from the God, analyze the tendencies of the disciples, of the students and then start teaching. Then your teaching will have the impact not only for this generation but for all the generations to come. So that was Sri Ramakrishna's teaching to Keshav Chandra Sen and to us uh, regarding how to teach others and when to teach others. So that much for the day. Om Namah Shri Bhagavate Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. Jai Thakur, Jai Maha, Jai Swami.